Hi, welcome back to a new video here on my channel. I've been shopping on eBay again on my favorite retro store and I'm not sure where he's getting all this stuff from, but I've purchased a lot at his store already. And I recently ordered the Thermal Take Sub-Zero 4G. If this was done by Gigabyte, they would probably call it HG. Anyway, um, we will try today if this will be able to cool our 12900K on our Apex board right here, because Looking at this, I mean, if you compare this with the EK Intel Tech Cooler, which was published within the last year, I think, this kind of looks familiar, but this is 18 years old. Before we continue with today's video, there are some very exciting news from our partner Hetzner, which I want to share with you. Hetzner expanded to the United States. And since yesterday, you can now use the simple and seamless cloud console to configure your cloud server using the new location in Ashburn, Virginia for your cloud server, which will be ready within seconds. And of course, also the location in the US will feature all the well-known services from Hetzner, such as no minimum contract term, very fast internet connection and DDoS protection at the best price performance ratio, starting at 3 euro 49 per month. Find out more in the link below. Sub-Zero 4G results from, because it was meant for Intel Pentium 4, 478 up to 4 gigahertz. That's why they called it Sub-Zero 4G. Looking at the packaging, it should contain three main elements. The cooling block, not sure why an additional fan is included, and the controlling element. Further inspecting the backside of the packaging, this is so funny. This is so close to the Intel and EK Tech cooler. If you look at this controller PCB unit, it shows that it also features two different temperature sensors. So it has an ambient temperature sensor built in and it will be connected with a cable to our cooling unit. So that, that's very, very similar. Also quite interesting detail. It shows that if you're running 3D Mark 2001, it should have a peak CPU temperature of 45 degrees Celsius while having an idle of 28. That should be interesting. But let's look inside. This is the controller unit which is uh, also a very very interesting piece because you will or you should straight notice that this is not PCI Express. This is also not AGP. This is PCI and it's 5 volt PCI which is indicated by having the notch right here. That's also why we will use the second main board which is already laying on the table. That's a socket 775 based board which I still had laying around and this still has um, PCI slots which will be required for power. Because as you can see down there, most of the pins are not populated. So there will be no data connection to your system. But if you check the pinout of PCI, it shows that this will deliver 5 volt and 12 volt to the system and at the same time also ground the card. Obviously, we could also directly connect this to a PSU, just make an adapter with a SATA cable, for example, and directly probably just solder on the pins or have like a PCI adapter. Unfortunately, I don't have any PCI stuff laying around anymore and I don't want to solder on this because I want to keep it in the original shape state. That's why I'm just going to use a second setup for just having the 5 volt and 12 volt supply. So let's take a look at the cooling element. I think this still looks quite cool. Even if you compare this to nowadays with this like blue anodized aluminum heatsink. But this heatsink should also be the limiting factor of this tech cooler. There's an 80 millimeter fan on top, but we have to keep in mind that this heatsink not only has to dissipate the heat of the Peltier elements, because there are actually two in there, which you might be able to see, but it also has to dissipate the heat of the CPU. And all of that combined, I'm not so sure about the surface area of this heatsink. It was quite difficult to find the exact power consumption or cooling capability of those tech elements but they should be somewhere at around 70 watt. And here in the base of the block, you can see there's a temperature probe included. What's also interesting is when I checked for some images online and information online, this was a copper heat sink, a uh, copper cold plate, but this seems to be just aluminum. Interesting. By the way, this is indeed just a normal case fan, old school, just taped LEDs to the side. 
I just inspected this controller card more in detail and noticed something interesting because there is a jumper down there. And then I also inspected like the spec sheet and everything further and noticed that this seemed to be just a I put my thermal take sticker on there thing because it was originally made by Active Cool. And if you Google Active Cool and this number, you can find the manual of this thing. And then I also found out that this jumper is for two different modes. One like the stock operation mode would be something that's called quiet mode. Not sure what it does exactly, maybe not running the Peltier element at max power, maybe also not tuning the fan to the max speed. But if you remove this thing, then it will run on max power, which means max power for the tech and also max fan speed. Also, if you take a look at the front, this requires external power. So it also means that there is a PSU inside. One big question is always, does this old stuff even still work? That's something we never know. Everything is assembled. The cooler is attached with this cable to the controller card. I added a little bit of thermal paste on the cold plate so we can add this temperature probe on here and then see if things are getting cold or not. So far, I think this looks good. At least judging from the manual, if there is only one blue LED, this should be okay. I'm not sure why the temperature is still reading 25. It feels colder. Maybe my probe is damaged. So same thing with a different probe. Maybe that's because of the different modes you can use for operation. I will just remove the jumper and see what happens. Even without the jumper, things did not really change. Not sure. Looking at the current clamp, I'm a bit worried that something might be broken. But it could also be that this thing is much more intelligent than I assumed. Because looking at this temperature, this is pretty much like ambient. Maybe there is some kind of dew point compensation also in there. And this is maybe why it's not switched on at all. Let's just put it on the 1200K, see if anything happens. So now th something is happening, 1.3 amps already. I assume this would be 12 volt, could also be 18. I'm not sure what the output power of this PSU is, but something is happening. It seems this thing is much smarter than I expected. Now this started to make uh, weird noises, which is because there is also a fan inside here. I didn't even notice, I didn't even see anything. Must be sitting somewhere in here. This is like air intake. You can feel it and there is some warm air coming out in the front here. Okay, this fan just decided to run at 100% fan speed. Maybe it's getting a bit warm. This is its almost impossible to touch. Feels like it's 60 degrees, something in this region. The heatsink itself. It's pulling 2.3 amps right now. I'm not quite sure if I would call that sub-zero. This is idle. I mean, it's 5G, 1.3 volt, but this, this is idle. Shit. Since the packaging states that this was made for a peak power consumption of 73 watt, I now power limited the 12900K in BIOS to so 65 watt. However, this didn't really help. The system is not even running anymore, but the fan is still freaking out. This is still pumping two amps into the heatsink. Oh, now it finally calmed down, but yeah, the, the surface area is just, is just not sufficient for this type of workload. I just took a minute to open the PSU. This, this is absolutely fascinating. This really is a PSU for a PCI slot. And this was the tiny fan making all the noise. Some MOSFETs responsible for the output voltage. <laughs> very, very interesting design. I've never seen something like this before. Yeah, but I guess we also never saw something like this again. It's amazing how much effort and time they probably spent into making these and I think they were never a success. It was somehow clear right from the start that this, I wouldn't say it's a bad idea, but that this might not work. And the main aspect is still, I think this is the same for every tech cooler we visited in the previous years except for the EK one, because this is actually using custom water cooling. But for everything that is air cooling based, the surface area is simply not high enough. If you would assume that those techs are consuming maybe 70 watt, and then your 12900K is easily pumping 100 watt into this. This tiny aluminum heatsink will never be able to dissipate like 170 watt. This is simply not going to work. However, I think this is an amazing thing. Thinking about that this is 18 years old, this is this is fantastic. Especially if you compare it with uh, the latest Intel innovation, the cryo cooler. And looking at this, which is 
so similar, except for the fact that you don't have control over the microcontroller. I'm not sure what exactly this thing is doing. You never know if it's looking for just matching the ambient temperature or if it's going to go sub-zero, which is something we definitely did not see. This is not even going sub-ambient from what I can tell, but this is still awesome. This is still pretty awesome, considering that this was from 2003. Not sure what Active Cool is doing nowadays. I checked the website and uh, their latest announcement was for CBIT 2007, so I guess they're not doing great. But overall, this, this was still awesome. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.